हेलो एंड वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स द टॉपिक ऑफ टूडेज डिस्कशन इज ऑप्टिकल गेट और लाइट एम्पलीफिकेशन सो लेट अस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ओके सो एज यू नो दैट वेन एवर रेडिएशन पासिस थ्रू अ सर्टन कलेक्शन ऑफ एटम्स और इन पासिस थ्रू एनी मीडियम जनरली वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट इट लूज इट्स एनर्जी ओके सो लेट अस कंसिडर अ कलेक्शन ऑफ एटम्स which is confined between two planes p1 and p2 uh, whose area is s each and these planes are separated by a distance dz okay the plane p1 is situated at z and the plane p2 is situated at z plus dz so the separation between them is dz and the radiation of intensity i is being uh, uh, passed through these uh, these collection of atoms okay so the volume between these two planes is will be s dz because s is the area of the plane and dz the separation so s dz will be the volume okay so we are interested in the question that what is the energy absorbed in the volume s dz when a radiation passes from this plane p1 to the plane p2 okay so this question can be answered in two ways so first way is that suppose at this plane p1 uh, which is located at z the intensity of radiation uh, is iz okay and the direction of propagation of radiation is along z axis okay and also the intensity at this plane p2 which is at z plus dz uh, will be say i iz plus dz okay so what is the amount of energy which is absorbed when this volume s dz can be calculated if you make a difference of intensity iz and iz plus dz and then multiply it with the area s so that is shown here and the net amount of energy which is being absorbed in within the volume uh, s dz uh, by the collection of atoms will be iz minus iz plus dz into s okay so this z dz is very small since so you can make a taylor expansion series of this iz plus dz so you do it uh, up to first order and uh, then you will get uh, iz uh, minus di by dz into dz as a taylor expansion of iz plus dz okay then uh, what you get is uh, this iz and this iz will be cancel out and you will be uh, having with And minus d i by d z into s d z. Notice this s d z is the volume. So this is the amount net amount of energy which is being absorbed uh, when the radiation passes uh, between the plane p one and p two. Okay. Now let us calculate this energy in in a different way. So as you know that this is a collection of atoms. Okay. The as the radiation will pass through this uh, these collection of atoms, then these atoms will absorb. the energy due to the process of stimulated absorption and also they will they will uh, uh, produce or they will uh, emit energy uh, by the process of stimulated emission so uh, and another there is also another process which is spontaneous emission but that is spontaneous emission process we are not taking into this calculation because is spont because the radiation which is coming out through the process of spontaneous emission is incoherent that may be uh, go in any random direction okay so there are very few chances very less chances that uh, the the radiation is coming in the direction of this z axis okay it's a very very uh, very very small fraction of, of energy produced by A spontaneous emission which is coming in along z axis so we are neglecting spontaneous emission okay so what we have that that the two processes uh, which are of uh, importance is that one the one process is the atoms absorb energy by the process of stimulated absorption so they absorb energy okay but simultaneously some of the atoms uh, from level 2 to level 1 well, Uh, make stimulated emission and they give you um, they add up um, the some amount of energy within this system okay so let us calculate the net amount of energy uh, which is uh, being absorbed between the volume s dz by these two processes so the energy which is absorbed uh, <coughs> uh, in the process of stimulated absorption can be written as 
T12 H cross omega STZ. Notice T12 is the number of uh, atoms which are making transition from level 1 to 2 through the process of stimulated absorption per unit time, per unit volume and H cross omega is the energy absorbed by each atom. Okay? And then SDZ is the volume between these two planes. So, T12 H cross omega SDZ will be the amount of energy absorbed by these collection of atoms in, uh, in through the process of stimulated absorption. Okay? But simultaneously, they are also adding some amount of energy due to stimulated emission. So, that amount of energy can be written as T21 H cross omega SDZ where T21 is the number of atoms making transition from level 2 to level 1 through the process of stimulated emission per unit time per unit volume and H cross omega is the amount of um, um, energy uh, emitted during one transition. Okay? So, it is T21 H cross omega SDZ will be the energy released through stimulated emission from level 2 to level 1. Okay? So, now what is the net amount of energy? Okay, net amount of energy absorbed per unit time in the volume SDZ, then it will be the difference of these two. Okay, so you make difference T12 minus T21 H cross omega SDZ. Okay, you know that T12 and T21 contains the coefficients, Einstein coefficients B12 and B21. So, as al already you know that B12 is equal to B21, as Einstein's relation says, say, says that b12 equals to b21 so you take b21 as common and put the value of b21 in terms of a spontaneous emission lifetime how you, because you know that einstein's second relation says that a21 upon b21 equals to h cross omega cube n0 cube pi square c cube so if you want to calculate what is b21 so b21 will be uh, B21 can be written in terms of A21 and then put the value of A T A21 as 1 upon TSP. Okay? So, you will get uh, pi square C cube H cross omega cube N0 cube TSP then U G omega N1 minus N2 H cross omega STZ. Okay? Notice here the number of there are many terms. Okay? So, be careful here. Notice that this U is now energy density, not the energy density per unit frequency interval. Notice, okay. So, you can have uh, the idea of this thing from, uh, from the discussion of line shape function for case 2, okay. Now, uh, now, now let us equate, okay. This is the amount of uh, energy, net amount of energy absorbed, okay, that we have calculated in first, first process, first way. And this is the amount of energy absorbed uh, which we have calculated by taking the um, taking into account the stimulated absorption and stimulated emission. Okay, so let us equate these two. By equating, we will get dI by dz equals to minus gamma times I, where gamma is some coefficient which is called gain coefficient, and that gamma we have put as pi square c cube omega upon omega square n zero square TSP g omega n1 minus n2 notice here the number of things are there so we have put uh, except uh, this u and then one n0 and one c except this all the thing i have put as gamma okay so this is called gain coefficient and second thing uh, relation which we have uh, used is the intensity is i is given by velocity times energy density so, since velocity is c upon n0, okay, so i is c upon n0 into u, so that we have made uh, use this here. So, di by dz is minus gamma i. This is differential equation has a very simple solution which is iz equals to i0 e to the power minus gamma z. Okay? So, if you barely look this uh, expression, then uh, one can easily say that okay, uh, the initial intensity will decay, will decrease exponentially because this is a minus sign. So, the inten initial intensity will uh, decrease exponentially uh, with the distance, with the length. Okay? Longer the radiation travels through the medium, uh, la uh, larger is the decrease uh, in amount of energy. Okay? So, more is the energy decrease will be. So, uh, it, it is a general case, okay? but this happens when this gamma is a positive quantity. 
Now notice when this when gamma becomes negative. Okay, so there are two important cases to discuss here. Since gamma depends on the difference population difference n one minus n two. Okay, so one case which is a very usual case is that when n one is greater than n two, which is the normal situation, the ground state population is always larger than the excited state population. So when n one minus n two is a positive quantity, that means n one is greater than n two, then gamma is a positive quantity, and here e to the power minus gamma z will be will be a decreasing function. Okay, so the intensity will decrease. Okay, because this uh, e uh, this will become e to the power minus of something positive. Okay, so that will decrease. So this situation when n one is greater than n two and which leads to gamma is a positive leads to the attenuation of the uh, intensity or energy. Okay, now consider the second case when a special case when this n one is less than n two. That is this. Uh, now notice that recall that this. Uh, N one is less than N two, or N two is greater than N one, is the case of population inversion. Okay, recall that population inversion. So, in, in the state of population inversion, when N two is greater than N one, so this quantity gamma will become negative. If this gamma becomes negative, then e to the power becomes positive. In that case, you see that the intensity, initial intensity, will now increase exponentially. and this is the concept of amplification uh, for uh, i mean that for uh, intensity to amplify okay so for intensity to amplify you need to create a state of population inversion in which n2 is greater than n1 and hence the gain coefficient becomes negative and you have amplification or optical gain okay so i hope you have understood this concept thanks for your time thank you